The Gospel reading is another post-resurrection manifestation or post-resurrection appearance of the risen Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, we are now on the fifth day of the Easter octave. The Gospel reading for today is actually a continuation of the beautiful story, the Emmaus story that was read yesterday, another post-resurrection appearance of the risen Christ. In yesterday's story, the risen Lord was walking along with Cleophas and his unnamed companion. But this time, the risen Lord manifested himself to the eleven apostles. Probably some will be wondering why eleven? I thought there are twelve. Yes, there were twelve. But one of them already betrayed the Master. Our Lord in today's Gospel gives proof of the reality of the resurrection. Our risen Lord explains the meaning of His death and resurrection. And at the same time, the risen Lord commands the apostles to preach the gospel. There are three little notes that I'd like to stress in today's reflection. What is the first note? The first note is that in our gospel reading for today, Jesus emphasizes the reality of the resurrection. Our Lord stresses the reality of the resurrection. The risen Lord in front of them is no phantom. The risen Lord in front of them is not a product of hallucination. The risen Lord is not an imaginary vision. The Jesus of history who died on the cross was in truth the Christ of faith who rose from the dead. What does this point reveal? What does this point tell us? It tells us that Christianity is not founded on the dreams of men's disordered or crazy minds. Christianity is not founded on the visions of their fevered eyes. Christianity is anchored on one who in actual historical fact faced and fought and conquered death and rose again. That is why the resurrection is not a product of one's imagination. The resurrection is a historical fact. It happened to a historical person. The eleven apostles were not drunk. The eleven apostles were not asleep when the risen Christ appeared to them. They were very much awake. They were lucid. They were not drunk. They knew all along what was going on. And that is, they knew the reality of the resurrection. The second point is the following. In the same gospel, Jesus emphasizes the necessity of the cross. It was to the cross that all scriptures look forward. The cross was not forced on God. The cross was not an emergency measure when all else had failed and when the scheme of things had gone wrong. The cross has always been part of the plan of God. The cross is an inescapable reality in the life of Jesus. And similarly, the cross is also an inescapable reality in our lives. The third and last point. In the same gospel, the risen Lord underlines the urgency of mission. The urgency of mission. The apostles had to preach the call to repentance. The apostles had to preach the offer of forgiveness. My dear brothers and sisters, 
the early church was not to live forever in the cenaculum. The early church was not to live forever in the upper room. Men were sent out by Jesus to be his apostles. In other words, the church always has a missionary character. It is the nature of the church to be missionary. And all the apostles became missionaries, all of them except Judas, because Judas chose to be a traitor or a betrayer. All the apostles traveled to different places and nations to preach the good news. My dear brothers and sisters, finally, this particular post resurrection appearance of the risen Lord also underscores the fact that He really rose from the dead. He really rose from the dead. Our Lord was forced to present convincing proofs to the eleven that He is not a ghost. He is not a ghost. When He said, Look at my hands, look at my feet, I have hands and I have feet, and you touch them, I am not a ghost. And they even gave him some breakfast, and our Lord was able to eat. Ghosts do not eat. Ghosts do not eat. But the apostles gave him something to eat, and our Lord ate with the apostles. And interestingly, during the time of the apostles, during the time of Jesus, the apostles believed in the existence of ghosts. That is why our Lord was telling them, Hey, I am not a ghost. They thought that the risen Christ was a ghost. That is why they exhibited initial incredulity when they saw the risen Christ in front of them for the first time. And my dear brothers and sisters, the resurrection is not a myth. It is not a man-made story. It is not a myth concocted by those who were perhaps disappointed with Him. Belief in the resurrection is a matter of faith. And to believe in the resurrection is to accept the testimony of a large group of witnesses who personally saw the risen Christ in their midst. Amen.